once you've done your due diligence in deeply researching both heliocentric and geocentric cosmologies, the idea that Earth is a globe, tilting, wobbling, and spinning, with magical bendy oceans, and upside-down people in Australia, soon becomes the most absurd and far-fetched concept. You start to wonder how you could have ever believed it in the first place. The main reasons are because everyone else around you unquestioningly believed it, and it was originally introduced to you around the same time you were being introduced to Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. Cartoons and imagination were your reality at the time, and imaginative cartoons like these Earth Globes capture and captivate children's minds. As if under a stupefying spell, many adult children steeped in confirmation bias, unwilling or unable to exercise true skepticism, remain forever duped by NASA's Freemasonic charade. Words are produced by spelling, and magic is produced by spells. Words are truly magical in the original sense of the word magic, meaning to influence people by using hidden natural forces. The words we choose, how, when, where, and why we speak them, all have various effects on people and events around us, just like casting a spell. Cursing, for example. Curse words are negative spells, which can be mentally or emotionally scarring for some, when cast with enough intention and intensity. Even to write, W-R-I-T-E, is a homonym of rite, R-I-T-E, meaning a sacred ritual or solemn ceremony. The word grammar actually comes from the Latin word grimoire, which means a book of spells. Therefore, to spell a sentence quite literally means to sentence someone to your spell. There are serious subconscious, emotive, and even propagandistic consequences to the words we choose to spell into existence. Adding an S before a word turns it into a long, sharp weapon that can kill. Or by adding an L inside, you can create a whole world from your word. The Bible even goes as far as saying in John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. George Orwell's 1984 also illustrates the importance of words with his concept of newspeak, whereby simplifying and removing certain words from common usage works as a type of mind control. Without the proper nomenclature, to formulate complex ideas in our minds and clearly express them to others, they become literally unthinkable and incommunicable. So being impeccable with your word is of paramount importance, as stated in the first principle of the Kabbalion and the first of the four agreements of the ancient Toltecs, always be impeccable with your word. That means having integrity by saying exactly what you mean and meaning exactly what you say. We must spell into existence only that which we intend to manifest. In order to do this, it is incredibly important which words we choose. As confident, adamant knowers of our true cosmology, there are certain word choices that need to be changed to remain consistent. For example, heliocentrists constantly use the words globe, global, planet, and planetary when referring to Earth. They will often mock geocentrists by asking us things like, aren't there flat earthers all around the globe? Instead of using the words globe, global, planet, or planetary, flat earthers should say the words plane, world, earth, or realm. Always intentionally replace the word global with the word worldwide. Saying across the world instead of around the world better brings to mind a plane and the word round is too ambiguous to use altogether, as both a circle and a sphere are round. Another ambiguous word is universe. This tends to bring to mind the infinite space and planets from the heliocentric model, but technically is just another grimoire spell made of the words uni, meaning one, and verse, meaning word. The one word, or one world, in this universe is Earth, so this term is certainly redeemable, 
but unfortunately currently still maintains its heliocentric connotations. Galaxies, black holes, nebulas, white dwarfs, red dwarfs, blue dwarfs, and all other fantasy space dwarfs should be kept for role-playing games and left out of scientific vernacular. Space obviously exists as a result of living in three physical dimensions, but the concept of outer space, as promoted by NASA and the other so-called space agencies, does not. As the Red Hot Chili Peppers sang, space may be the final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. So instead of saying outer space, try using words like the sky or the heavens. Instead of the solar system, you can say the earth and sky, or the heavens and the earth. The word atmosphere is a tricky one, as it contains the word sphere. If the flat earth is actually covered by a dome firmament, as some believe, then referring to the solid vault of the sky as atmosphere could still be correct. Some flat earthers have suggested changing it to the atmosflat, or flatmosphere, which is fine informally, but rather silly, not very practical, and sure to be misunderstood. For contestable words like this, or space, or the South Pole, I like to make finger quotations when speaking, or to insert the words alleged, or supposed, or so-called, before saying these words, to make it clear to the listener that they should remain skeptical of the concepts being described. I also like changing the word astronaut to astronaut. Lastly, the word gravity comes from the Latin gravis and gravitas, meaning heavy, weight, and seriousness, is now being used by supposedly scientific minds to denote a mythical magnetic-like force allegedly existing in all objects, like a universal love potion, causing everything in existence to be irresistibly attracted to one another. But since even the Burj Khalifa cannot be shown to attract a single dust bunny a fraction of an inch, there's not a shred of demonstrable evidence to believe in this gravity, and no reason to speak it into existence by using the word when others are far more suitable. Objects fall due to their own weight, heaviness, and relative density compared to the medium surrounding, so using terms like these are more appropriate. When we purge our vocabulary of these fantasy words and concepts, then adjust to using more literal, factual replacements, another advantage is that it acts like a subtle calling card for fellow Flat Earthers. A friend of mine recently listened for hours to a notable speaker, and throughout the speech heard a distinct lack of heliocentric language, along with frequent use of keywords and phrases such as plain, realm, across the world, and sea level, making her wonder if they may be a geocentrist, a fact later confirmed in private correspondence. So not only does a careful reassessment of our language result in speaking more factually, but also signals to other conscious individuals that we are on the same wavelength. By refusing to cast these heliocentric spells to the malleable masses, and choosing our words more carefully, this allows the spinning globe and its dizzy globalist propagandists to continue exposing themselves, while we remain still and solid on fixed level ground. <laughs>